questions from the audience. I wonder if we should just take a few, and then we can um, and then we can respond to them all together. So, okay. Thank you. Um, I have a question. What's the difference between uh, the U.S. debt and um, the debt that African nations own? Because the U.S. debt doesn't keep the U.S. from being one of the leading powers of the world, but then African nations can't make it because of that debt that is strangling them. Should I talk? Okay. Uh, regard, the first question is uh, a very important question. What makes African and third world debt different from the American debt? Number one, America is never going to pay its debts. Uh, it doesn't have to. It can, its debts are in its own currency. We can simply print it. Uh, the African debt is not in its currency. The African debt is in U.S. dollars. Africa has to uh, earn the U.S. dollars, uh, and uh, the only way it can uh, earn the U.S. dollars is not to be assassinated for growing its own food and becoming uh, independent uh, and uh, doing something that the United States uh, does not like. The principle underlying the foundation of the World Bank, uh, the International Bank for Inter uh, 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 IBRD, uh, research, uh, the, the World Bank, is that no country should grow its own food. Africa and the third world should only grow export crops. To export, uh, uh, in order to have an oversupply of cocoa and uh, uh, other tropical raw materials, to keep down the price, they must buy their grain from the United States or Europe so that if they do something that we don't like, we can do what America tried to do to China in the 60s. We can sanction them. We can say, we're going to starve you. We're going to not export uh, any grain to you. Uh, it, 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 so owing uh, m uh, their foreign debt in dollars means that they have to somehow sell something that the United States wants, not what they want. Uh, I think the, the most evil organizations in the world today are the, uh, the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund. And uh, my book, Super Imperialism, that I wrote in 1972, uh, is all about that. Uh, the largest purchasers of the book uh, were the Defense Department and the CIA. I was immediately, uh, the organization I worked for was given a $75,000, $85,000 Defense Department contract for me to come to explain to them how American imperialism worked, and they used it as an, uh, a how-to-do-it book. They thought it was just, uh, uh, they, it was just spontaneous. Uh, and I had written the book thinking that socialists and third world countries uh, would do something about it, and indeed it was translated into Spanish and you know, other languages, but it was really uh, the Defense Department that uh, uh, applied uh, most of this, and I was amazed when I was invited to the White House uh, uh, to explain how imperialism worked. Uh, and my boss said, we've run rings around the British imperialists. This is how to do it. Uh, you make them owe the debts in your currency, not their own. You, uh, you control their central bank uh, and make them uh, financially dependent on you, and uh, then you've, you've got a stranglehold for them. So uh, certainly the third world countries should uh, cancel the debts uh, under the odious debt principle. Uh, I haven't been able to convince any of them to do it because they said if we do that, the CIA will kill us. So how do you break that cycle? Uh, that's, a, that's a problem I've not been able to solve. Um, yeah. The other thing, uh, when you were responding to the first question, um, there's also something we're suffering from in Africa the devaluation of currency as another way of devaluation of the currency. Oh, currency, yes. yes. As a way of keeping us dependent continuously. Uh, that's a good point. When a country devalues a currency, what are they devaluing? Well, you know, there's a world price for grain, a world price for aluminum, a world price for raw materials. Uh, the only thing that they can really devalue is the price of their labor. So when uh, Africa or Latin America or Greece is told to, or America is told to devalue the currency, what that means is pay labor less. Uh, you have to squeeze out more 
to pay the top of the economic pyramid, to suck it all up uh, to the top 10% or 1% or 0.1%. Uh, so devaluation is basically an anti-labor uh, policy to prevent a domestic market in prosperity from developing. Uh, that is why uh, the... Uh, China and Russia are saying, we don't want to be part of the dollar area. Uh, we want our own currency, that, and we will only borrow in our own debt. Last time I went to China, uh, it was a little annoying because they insisted in paid me, paying me in yuan, which uh, the, all, all these little red bills uh, that I, you have to go to a bank to turn in, uh, and yet they said, well, we're following your advice. Uh, I, what do you complain about? So <laughs> what could I do? Uh, uh, it's a good idea, but at least they don't want any part of uh, uh, American sanctions.